All right, sketching lesson six, fully defining a sketch. So what we're going to do is you can click on this slide deck, and we have fully defining a sketch. We're making a wall outlet cover. So just a quick review, Autodesk.com, Products, Fusion 360, learning training tutorials. So by now, if you've finished sketching basics, intermediate, mod uh, modifying one and two, and then adding to constraints and dimensions, we're on our last uh, sketching exercise for now. Once you've finished each task, for those kids that are actually in my class, hit the print screen button on your finished product, uh, product, and you can add that to your Google Drive class folder. That way, I can see that you actually completed it. If you have any questions, don't be shy to ask in class. So we can click on the side deck and see what we're going to do. Here, I've already completed it. We'll just start over. So what I'll do is uh, delete. And we'll just start from scratch. We don't need to see the origin. So this assignment requires everything to be in millimeters. So we're just regular unit back to our millimeters unit back to our regular home page. And we've got it already named as Wall Outlet Demo Lesson 6. And we can go sketch, create sketch. I like to work in the top view. And the first thing it asks us to do is um, open up a Fusion 360 document, create a sketch on any of the default planes to begin, sketch geometry of the wall outlet, sketch a two-point rectangle, and be sure to make sure the origin is in the center. So we just want to go R for rectangle, and we're not looking for anything fancy, something like that. And we've got this guy, which is here in the middle, the origin. Next step after that is create a construction line between the two midpoints of the rectangle. So we go L for line, dry, drag down the side until we get the triangle, then slide across and you can drag up until you get the triangle again. There we go. Now if you hit escape, you're no longer in the line function. Click on that line, come up to the side and turn it to a construction line so it's just the dashed line. Next past that. Add a circle at the center located in the midpoint of the construction line. So C for circle, move so that you snap to the construct construction line. And if you have to, zoom in so that you can see the difference. And you should get a triangle. There we go, there's a triangle. And we're going to make a circle, random size, nothing, nothing specific required yet. Pass that. Sketch a rectangle above, creating the outlet's cutout and then sketch two arcs on the left and right hand side. Change the left and right hand sides to construction lines. So these two guys are going to be part of the original rectangle, then they're going to be turned to construction lines. So we come up and we're going to do a two point rectangle, something kind of like that. Then we're going to go and select an arc from three points. Click on each corner, drag it out, something like that. Come to the other side. Do something sort of similar, nothing special. All right. Now we want to escape the arc function, click on that line, switch it to construction, click on the other vertical line, make it a construction line. Done. Next slide, mirror the object. So come back, come down, choose mirror. No shortcut for that that I know of. Click all four lines that make your outlet piece, and then select your construction line as your mirror. Hit enter. Next slide. With the general shape in place, uh, it's time to add constraints. So you have to add first uh, a concentric constraint to the two arcs on the top left of the cutout. Because the bottom one has been mirrored from the top, whatever we change in the top outlet cutout will automatically happen to the bottom one. That's the nice thing about mirroring it. Uh, so add a concentric constraint to the two arcs. Back to fusion. So we want to find where that is. We're looking for concentric. And double check once again. Did I get it right? Concentric. Okay. Concentric. Click on the icon. Click on arc one. Click on arc two. Changes a little bit. Looks messed up, but just stick with it. So add a vertical constraint to the center point of these arcs and the center point of the smaller circle. So vertical constraint, vertical and horizontal is right here. Click on this center dot that will 
highlight both arcs and then click on the center of the circle. Now they're all in line. Stick with it, it still doesn't look right, but it will. Add an equal constraint between the two arcs uh, of the cutout. So stick with doing it at the top, equals down here. Click on the arcs. Now it makes them the same. Add a coincident constraint with the origin and the center point of the small circle. So this will automatically drag all of this to snap to the center of the origin. So coincident is the top one. Zoom in, it'll make it easier to see. And you can click on the center of the circle and the origin. And everything obviously automatically moves over in alignment with the origin. Next slide, six of eight. Add dimensions to the outer rectangle. The width is 70 millimeters. The height is 114. And the dimension of the circle in the middle is 12. So if we go D for dimension, click on this line, and we want to make that 70. Then D for dimension, we want to make this side line uh, 114, not 1100, my bad, 114. And then D for dimension one more time. And we're going to make this circle 12 millimeters, 12. So you can see these lines are starting to change to black. That means that they are fully defined. So now the computer knows exactly where they're located within the CAD software and their physical size. So they change from blue to black because they've been fully defined. That means we have a bit of work left to do with these guys because they haven't changed color. So now we have to give them sizes. So position the bottom edge of the cutout on top 25 millimeters above the horizontal construction line. So it says here 25 millimeters, but if you look down over on the side, it actually shows a dimension of 11 millimeters from the bottom to the construction line. So for the sake of making it the same as the diagram, if you click on the bottom of the cutout, you hover over the dimension line, and you can see it's 25. We want to make that 11. And it drags the whole thing down. Okay, So now these are fully defined because they have a set distance from the center. We come back over, and we have to now make the radius fully defined and the length fully defined. And we should be done. So if we hit D for dimension, click on this line, click on this line. We'll drag it the other way because we have more room. And it needs to be 28. 28. OK. And then if we hit D for dimension and we click one of these guys, we can make them 17. Now we are done. Everything has gone to black, which means it's fully defined. And it looks pretty much like a wall outlet. So pretty straightforward. That is the last of our sketching exercises. Next past that, we'll start on uh, a unit of modeling exercises. And a couple of these screencasts will be posted uh, either each week or a few weeks, depending on how things go. So stick with it and let me know if you have any questions.